We're continuing our, our discussion of the telencephalon, the phylogenetically newest part of the brain. We've already talked about how there are four lobes of the cortex that have sensory and motor capabilities as well as executive function. There's one other part of the cortex called the limbic cortex. This cortex can't really be seen from an outside view of the brain. If we draw a mid-sagittal section of the brain, here's the corpus callosum, which connects the two hemispheres of the brain. And the limbic cortex is right around that corpus callosum. The limbic system is important in emotion. And the limbic cortex is part of the limbic system. A couple of regions in the limbic cortex that we're going to talk about are the anterior cingulate cortex and the insular cortex. This is anterior cingulate cortex. The anterior cingulate cortex is actually really important in the emotional response to pain. And the pain reducing impact of morphine happens by decreasing activity in the anterior cingulate cortex. There are other regions in the limbic system that are also in the telencephalon that are a little bit harder to draw on here. Um, they're sort of lateral to the mid-sagittal section, but medial to the outside of the brain. So another important part of the telencephalon that's not really cortex is the hippocampus. The hippocampus is a brain region that's really important in learning and memory. And in particular, it's important in memory consolidation. That means that when you rehearse this information as you're studying it for the exam, your hippocampus will be hard at work consolidating that information, that is converting it from short-term to long-term memory. Another telencephalon region that's part of the limbic system but isn't part of the cortex is the amygdala. The amygdala is really important in fear and aggression and anxiety. and also fear learning. Activity of the amygdala is thought to be overactive in people with depression and some other mental illnesses that have excess fear or excess anxiety. The telencephalon, the phylogenetically newest part of the brain, has the four lobes of the cortex with their sensory and motor functions, as well as the limbic cortex. And then there are also these subcortical structures that are part of the limbic system. The hippocampus, the amygdala, and also the nucleus accumbens. This brain region is really important in reward and motivation. And it's also activated in response to morphine and is thought to be responsible for the euphoric effects of morphine. Another subcortical brain region that's part of the telencephalon is the basal ganglia. This region has a couple of subregions in it. One is the caudate nucleus. And the other is the putamen. The word basal ganglia is a bit of a misnomer because remember ganglia is the name for a group of cell bodies in the peripheral nervous system. We are of course in the central nervous system in the brain. So it would be more correct if it were called the basal nuclei. However, it isn't. So the caudate nucleus and the putamen are parts of the basal ganglia and they're important in motor control.
information from the basal ganglia go to the premotor cortex to help coordinate movements. And as we'll see later, this brain region is part of the pathway that's degenerated in Parkinson's disease, leading to the symptoms of resting tremor and other motor problems associated with Parkinson's disease.